Hey everybody, welcome to another video here on the Blue Abroad YouTube channel. Now today's video is all about putting in my season predictions for the 2022 AFL season. There's only one thing I can pretty much guarantee and that's that these predictions will not be correct. If I'm lucky, maybe one or two will be correct, but there's a couple here that are pretty easy I think. Well, who's to say what's easy and what's not? So. Let's get started. I, I think before I put in my predictions for certain awards and whatnot, uh, I want to talk a bit about the season and, and what I'm expecting from it. Obviously, the last, we'll call it the last two years, they've been significantly affected by COVID. 2020, more so than 2021. Obviously, we had the shortened quarters. We had the 10 or 11, maybe even 12-month break, 12-week break between rounds one and two, and it was, uh, look, it wasn't great. No crowds for the majority of it, hub life, etc. 2021 seemed to have a little less of that. I, I, I guess the one thing I'm hoping for in season 2022 is that we have an uninterrupted season, that being no random rounds where, you know, crowds aren't there. I guess that means I'm hoping for no more outbreaks. I mean, the way I look at it, everyone's vaccinated. Most, if not the same amount of people are boosted, so there shouldn't be any issue in that regard. But obviously it's something that we've had to learn over time and that's you can't really plan too far in advance for what you think may happen because life changes. COVID or not COVID, things happen, life happens. And so I guess the one thing is I'm hoping for no interruptions. I think this has serious potential to really spark the heartbeat of of Melbourne, of Victoria. Obviously, I'm, I'm based here in Melbourne. To be honest with you, if it weren't for the footy, there is no way I'd be living in Melbourne. That's how much I love it. I think it's just part of our culture. I think it'll light up the CBD. I think local businesses will get a nice kick out of it. I think the weekends will be a totally different energy as well. I think there's something special to be said about walking through the city and seeing the lights of the MCG in the distance and, and knowing that there's a game going on. I'm hoping we get, you know, all those big crowds back, you know, 80,000, 85,000. I'm hoping that, you know, the Carlton Richmond game round one, in my case, gets, you know, a, you know, a sellout crowd or close to 90,000. And I, I think we miss the raw. I think that's the thing that really lights us up. There's, there's something special about going to the footy. And I mean, for me, like I said before, there's, there's just nothing better in this world. No sport, no experience better in this world than a tight, contested game of Aussie rules football at the MCG um, with you know tens of thousands of people screaming and and I really do hope that we get to feel that energy again and I hope that it does spark the life back into this state this city and you know on a, on a larger scale this country now in terms of how I see it playing out I'm gonna start with um, the team that I believe will We'll start from the bottom. We'll go from the bottom all the way up. Uh, now the wooden spoon, this is a pretty, this is a cop out of an answer really. It's the Gold Coast Suns. I think they will finish down the bottom. I wonder about the confidence of the group, obviously with, with Ben King going down, Levi Kasbolt is there now, he'll be filling a role for sure. And I just wonder what it does for the belief of a group, especially a group that's on the rise. Now one thing about the Suns, is that they do generally start seasons pretty well, especially in those first five games. So I will predict that they will finish uh, at the bottom of the ladder and, and win the wooden spoon. If I had to pick a team that would be a surprise packet and rise a bit, and then a team that will fall a little bit, I think if I start with a team that I think may fall a little bit, now, this team didn't make the finals last year, but I'm really wary of the West Coast Eagles. Now, initially when I thought about the season, I thought, well, the Eagles, as long as they play 11 games at home, they'll probably win seven, eight of them and, and give themselves the best chance. I'm a little mindful of a few things. I'm a little mindful of the rules in the state of WA. I'm also mindful of what the impact of the Jack Darling situation has had on the group because I, from the outside looking in and if you're an Eagles supporter, correct me if I'm wrong, I view Jack Darling as really the cornerstone of the forward line and really, you know, seamlessly taking over from Josh Kennedy, who's, you know, sort of at the at the other end of his career and, and you know, don't know how many more years he has left. But I would still imagine that Jack Darling is the prime target there. I know they've got other players that are really up and coming, um, some lively small forwards. They've got 
one of the most influential players in the game in Nick Nat. But the injuries to key players, I also wonder about their motivation levels. They've reached the top of the mountain and they've won the premiership. And I just am mindful about them. And I don't exactly know what the situation with the WA rules will mean for them moving forward. Now, this comment might be completely irrelevant if they just play all their home games in Perth. But I just picture something going on with the Eagles. I think they'll fall a little bit and, and look to the future. So they will be the slider. The team that rises, <laughs> I'm so biased. It's, I really do believe that Carlton will be uh, the rising team. I mean, we won eight games in 2021, which was obviously a, a fail. I think we were disorganized for a lot of it. Lack of focus, lack of concentration. We never really got blown out until the very end of the season. And I think we will be a much better team in terms of our organization. I'm mindful of our start. I know we've got a new group in terms of the coaching and the philosophy, but I think we can really put on three to four more wins than last year and, and put ourselves in the finals race. And I am going to predict that we will finish eighth on the ladder. So I think we'll be the riser. But when I thought about that question, I thought it's probably gonna be one of Carlton, Freeman, or maybe St Kilda and I don't know why I get the feeling the Crows are going to be just solid I just I don't know why I just get a feeling now in terms of the top four I've gone with the D's I think they'll finish on top I spoke with Katie McDonald I think they've unlocked it whatever it is they've done it I think the doggies will be up there I still think Port Adelaide will be up there and then as a surprise packet I think the Swans I think the Swans now I'm mindful of the Lions I think they'll be great as well but the Swans, super impressive to me personally. I love the way they go about it. They've got young talent, and this young talent is starting to really come into their own, and I think they will win a few more games. They won 15 games in 2021, which was the same as Brisbane and the same as the Western Bulldogs, and I think they're on the rise. I think they're going to be a really tough team this year and, and find a way to get into that top four. So that's how I see that playing out. The grand final matchup. I think it'll be the Melbourne Footy Club and I think Port Adelaide will make the grand final. I think this is their, really their last chance. The way I look at Port from the outside looking in, I think they'll start a little slow. They've got a few injuries uh, to some key players, especially in that forward line. But I think their young forwards will, will hold the fort down for them. Obviously, you've got champions in Robbie Gray and, and Travis Boak um, who are at the, you know, more towards the end of their careers than the start. But I think that trio of Rosie, Butters, Dersma, I think they will really drive them forward. And you've got to remember last year, all three of them really, but especially Butters and Dersma, significantly injured. And I think they will really spark that engine again and give them one last shot. And I think Dixon will come back at the right time and, and be firing for the finals tilt. I mean, they're well coached. They, uh, they have some serious uh, key position stops. And like I said, I think this is their last chance of actually believing. They've, they've come up short in prelims and I think this is it for them. But we'll see how that one plays out. The Premiers, it's the Ds. Like I said before, I think they've unlocked themselves, the belief. And I think we're gonna start to see the championship belief come through or the premiership belief come through. When they're tested, every team's gonna be giving you know, their best shot at the D's. And I think the D's will will show that confidence. I think Richmond had it once they won their first of the, the, the couple that they won. And I think the Demons are, are starting to go that way. Obviously injuries will play a big part in every equation, but I, I do believe that they've got um, a nice situation going for them there. A couple of individual awards. I think Nick Dacos will win the Rising Star. No surprises there. However, I will say this, just um, just have a look out for Horn Francis. I think he's gonna be right up there. And, and Brody Kemp from Carlton is is also eligible. And you know, he's been in the system for you know longer than these other guys, and he was injured and didn't play much. He he got back into the side late last year and played two games. So this is his second preseason, but his first full preseason doing everything. So I look forward to seeing if he can capitalize on being in the system for a little longer than these other guys uh, the Coleman medal I think I think my 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 uh, my heart says Harry Mackay but my head says Jeremy Cameron I don't think Jeremy Cameron really got the best out of himself last year 
I see a situation where he gets his comfort level at Geelong this year and especially when they're playing in Geelong, I can see him kicking sixes and sevens and I really think he will rise back up and, and you know stake that claim as the one of the best forwards in the game and I think he will win the Coleman medal but I guess I'm going against my heart because I do think Harry's in a good situation with Charlie being in the team and taking another defender. So Jeremy Cameron is my Coleman medal winner for 2022 and the Brownlow medal. Now, initially I'm thinking Jack Steele. I think the Sam Walsh injury changed my perspective completely. And then also having watched Patrick Cripps play in the practice match and just seeing how the body looks, seeing how he's moving, how he's talking. And I think having Voss there with him to be, you know, he's coach and he's confident I think Patrick Cripps will win the Brownlow I um, I think Sam Walsh will miss a good chunk of the early parts of the season and I think Cripps will be back to that contested uh, beast that he you know made a name for I think the body looks exactly where it needs to look like at this point in the year and so I'm gonna go with Cripper so those are my predictions let me know what you think in the comments below and, and leave some of your predictions let's go with the Coleman medal the Brownlow medal Let's go with the rising star, the top four, and the premiers for season 2022. I look forward to reading what you have to say, and we'll go from there. Hey!